Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on is the Casio Classwiz allowed in exams? One of the questions that I get asked quite frequently is is the Classwiz allowed in examinations or certain particular examinations? What I'm going to do is to go through and show you some of the rules regarding calculators from some of the most popular exam boards uh, certainly in the UK but maybe if you're doing an international qualification it applies to you as well. First thing, I'm going to start um, with some information from the JCQ, so the Joint Council for Qualifications. There's just a list here from the JCQ website of uh, who this applies to, so who is part of the JCQ. And as you can see, it, if you are familiar with the exam boards in the UK, they, it's all the big name exam boards that you take at uh, GCSE or A-level equivalent. Uh, so AQA, uh, OCR, Pearson, that's Pearson Ed Excel as well as City and Guilds, CCEA for Northern Ireland, SQA for Scotland and WJEC for Wales as well. So as it said there, um, these qualifications uh, are going to be GCSEs, A-levels, Scottish Hires and other uh, vocational qualifications as well. Let's have a look at their guidance document regarding the use of calculators. Now I'm recording this video in January 2017. These are the guidelines for the academic year 2016-2017, which is the current academic year. In the box here we've got the instructions regarding calculators. Well, it does say calculators must be of a size suitable for use on the desk, but I imagine that most calculators, most modern portable calculators are, and certainly the class whiz is. Um, either battery or solar powered, well that's true, you can check out my video on the difference between the 570EX and the 991EX, one's battery, one's solar powered. And free of lids, cases or covers, you may have been told by the invigilators and in exams that you have to have your calculator lid removed, that's just standard procedure because often they print uh, instructions or formulas or little tips in the calculator lids that are usually printed on a sticker in there, so it's quite usual to not be allowed the lid. Um, so let's have a look on the right hand side then. Calculators must not be designed or adapted to offer any of these facilities. Well, language translators, well, certain models of classways do allow different languages. Uh, as we've seen, uh, there is a video to change from Arabic to English as a German version of it as well as some versions with uh, Spanish and Portuguese, but it doesn't actually translate um, the language there. I think the main issue uh, with this is if you're using a calculator for a question in a modern languages exam, so you're asked to calculate something, but the question is given in a different language, then you have to ensure that the calculator can't translate that for you. You've got to use your language skills. And certainly the classwiz doesn't act as a translator, it's just certain models will have different languages available to it. Now look at the next two, symbolic algebra manipulation and symbolic differentiation or integration. Well I'll start with the bottom one actually. The classwiz does not have symbolic differentiation or integration, it does have numerical differentiation or integration which means that uh, it can integrate between uh, an upper and lower bound and you can get a result but it won't differentiate or integrate uh, a function for you you have to you have to show that in the exam yourself it won't show you the steps to be able to do that so when it's saying symbolic it will should be able to do it algebraically and the class whiz can't uh, and similar with the symbolic algebra manipulation it can't do algebra for you there are calculators that exist that can do this they're usually quite expensive calculators and clearly they shouldn't be allowed in uh, GCSE or A-level examinations because part of the skill that's being tested is your manipulation uh, of algebra skills is certainly in A-level doing uh, differentiation or integration. So yeah, there's a good reason why they're not allowed, but the class whiz is not capable of symbolic algebra manipulation. As I said before, it would be a lot more expensive if it was. And then the last point on there, communication with other machines or the internet. Well, Casio have been quite clever about this, as we've seen that they make use of QR codes so that you can read your calculator from a mobile device and then that device will communicate with the internet to produce a visual display. So for example, you can uh, display graphs and uh, frequency diagrams and those sort of things. So it's not the calculator that's communicating with the internet, it is the mobile device that's communicating with the internet via a QR code provided by the calculators. So uh, it's quite a clever innovation there. It means that the class we should be allowed in exams because it can't communicate with the internet. It needs a secondary device to do that. Um, so let's have a look at what else is on there. We'll be borrowed from any other candidate. We should have your own calculator, uh, really. 
Let's have a look at the uh, last part here. Have retrievable information stored in them. This includes data bank dictionaries, mathematical formulas, and text. Let's start with the middle two on there. Um, the class which certainly doesn't have a dictionary in it. And as far as mathematical formulas, it won't be able to save mathematical formulas in there. It's not able to do that. Now, in terms of text, it doesn't um, store text. In fact, the only way in which it uses text is to either use sort of X and Ys in terms of the solve or of a table mode, or in terms of using the sort of A to F memory to be able to store different values in the memory for use later. If we have a look at what's at the top, the data banks, and at the same time, we're going to have a look at uh, the candidate who's responsible for the following, the very bottom uh, instruction on that, clearing anything in stored in the calculator. Uh, well, this is quite easy to do. If you've got anything stored in your calculator memory, all you need to do before the exam is to go through the reset procedure. I've done a video previously on this with the previous generation of Casio calculators. It's the same procedure with the ClassWiz. So provided you go through that process and clear out anything stored in the memory, then there won't be any retrievable information uh, stored in the calculator. It'll be as if you're starting uh, from a brand new calculator. So that's resolved that problem straight away. So let's just finally have a look at the other conditions that the candidate is responsible for. Well, the calculator power supply and the calculator in working condition. So it's obviously your responsibility to make sure that the calculator's got batteries or uh, that it's got the power, power supply and it's fully working. So it really is just uh, looking after your calculator there. So really, based on the JCQ guidelines, I can't see there being a problem uh, using the class whiz in any of the examinations provided by those exam boards that are part of the JCQ guidelines. Obviously, there is no specific advice that says the class whiz can or can't. Because there are so many different calculators available, usually exam boards just give these uh, general advice about what you're not allowed to have in exams. And usually the big issue is with algebraic manipulation. Let's next just have a look at um, the advice regarding the international A-level. So this is provided by Pearson um, at Excel. So this is from last summer's examinations. Judging by the date that it came out, there's going to be a similar sort of article released uh, in time for the 2017 exams. I don't believe anything has changed. And really, they've just got the same advice as the JCQ regulations. In fact, they've reproduced the JCQ regulations here. So very similar. And just down to the bottom, it does give you some examples here of some of the calculators that are not allowed. And they tend to be the more expensive calculators, the calculators uh, that perhaps can do algebraic manipulation, the Casio ClassPad 300 can. So really it seems to be fine um, with the Pearson International A-Level. I'm just gonna bring up the Cambridge International Examination, so the CIE regulations, and this is the information that they had regarding using calculators. Calculators with any of the following facilities are prohibited unless specifically stated otherwise in the syllabus. So they have gone a little bit further than the JCQ instructions. We've got uh, calculators with a graphic display. So you're not allowed graphic calculators um, in the Cambridge examination. Again, the ClassWiz is not capable of graphical display, but it can do via a mobile device with a QR code reader. Again, similar data banks, dictionaries, retrieval of text and formula we've done. QWERTY keyboards. Uh, well, there's no QWERTY keyboard on a class whiz, so that's out straight away. And again, we're back to symbolic algebra and uh, differentiation. We discussed that one before. And the bottom one there, very, very similar to what I've said previously. Uh, the calculator, the class whiz calculator itself is not capable of remote communication. It's only capable of uh, having a QR code read by another device that is capable of um, communicating with other machines or the internet. You're not going to have your mobile phone or tablet available to you when you're sat at the exam desk anyway. So that is is just an extension of part of the examination rules or the rules for the majority of examinations where you're not allowed a mobile phone to be present on your person at that time. So there's no possibility of being able to communicate with the internet via the ClassWiz at all. So there we go, we've had a look at the evidence. Um, as far as I can tell, the short answer to is the Casio class with allowed in exams appears to be yes, as far as the information tells us. As I said, there's no specific advice uh, given regarding the class with itself. 
Uh, there's yet to be an official UK version. I'm hoping that there is going to be one soon and we'll obviously presume that that will definitely be uh, allowed in any UK examinations. But as far as I can tell, if you do have the class whiz, it is allowed uh, in the exams. Um, I'm, I'm sure I will correct this if I'm given any information from the exam boards as to otherwise. But you've looked at the evidence yourself and if you've got a class whiz, you'll be able to confirm that uh, the class whiz isn't capable of these things. So there we go. You can go forward and use your class whiz in the GCSE and A-level examinations. Now, as far as um, some more specific examinations that are not governed by uh, the exam boards we discussed in this video, so perhaps we're talking about university qualifications, well, that is down to the individual university to decide uh, what calculators are appropriate for the examinations on their course. So you will have to talk to the departments in your university to get some specific advice on what calculators are available for them. I can't comment on that. All I can comment on really is the information that I've got from the exam boards here. And as far as we can tell, yes, you're okay to go forward with the Casio ClassWiz. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Calculator Guide.